Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back for another day of SummerSlam 2021. And I can't speak for you, but God knows I've been blessed by the teaching and the preaching of the word of the Lord. I've been blessed by the creativity of all of the voices that have been blessing us all month long. So with that being said, we're going to dive right in. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you. For what our eyes are preparing to see, what our ears are preparing to hear, and what our hearts are being made to feel. God, prepare us now to be blessed. Prepare us now to hear from heaven. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. In Jesus' name, amen. And my brothers and sisters, thank y'all for being in worship with us on today. And I'm so excited to present this amazing woman of God. I've known her for the last 15 years. And I promise you, there is not a more gracious and generous. There is not a more graciously supported woman of God than that of Evangelist Deborah Wiggins. I thank God that ever since I was blessed to meet her at 1541 Lions Avenue, she is a strong champion for the Lord. You name it, she's able to support you through it. And I promise you, she's gifted in so many areas. She's a writer. She's a psalmist. She just does so many different things. The Lord uses her in very unique ways. And I bless the Lord that on today, not only is she an author, not only is she creating businesses for herself, but on today, you get to hear the woman of God in the grace and the strength that the Lord uses her. She's a woman that doesn't mind telling her own story. She's a woman that doesn't mind showing her own scars because as Henry Nowen declared, she believes that she can be a wounded healer. So today we thank God for Evangelist Deborah Wiggins. She's going to come. She's going to bless us. Immediately following a musical offering from our music ministry that shall set the soil for the word to go forward. SummerSlam 2021 presents Evangelist Deborah Wiggins. I want you to stay tuned. I promise you're going to be blessed. Sing, y'all. Yeah. 
were slammed. The goal of this service is to slam a devil on his back. Yeah. So, yeah. And you know what? It even uh, passes all so long every day. Right. Slam the devil on his back. Yeah. What's well, so holding wise God? Lord, well, just want to thank you for being in your house one more time, dear God. Yes, God. Uh, thank you for uh, getting getting us in your safe, dear God. You're traveling verses, dear God. Thank you for everyone that's here, everyone that wanted to be here, and even our virtual watchers, dear God. Bless our homes, dear God. And this give us a blessing, dear God. Bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If I had to pin a title, it would be, You Have Been Given the Power to defeat Satan, the devil. Amen. First Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary is not imaginary, nor a mythological character. Satan, the devil, is real. Yeah. A spirit being with intelligence, tangible characteristics, and whose ceaseless goal and ambition is to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's coming from John 10.10. 10. Amen. 24-7, Amen. great grace and to everybody that's watching. The enemy is on the crowd, seeking to cause trouble and destruction to all believers. And I say all believers because you see, Everyone that's unsaved, Satan already have them at, at uh, his beck and call. Yeah. And the work of God throughout the world. So the devil aggressively, he searches for weakness in our faith and spiritual life, hoping to devour us with deception, temptation, or depression. He is the personification of all that is evil, and is the author of every spiritual work. So regardless of whether you realize or not, Satan has targeted God's children, yeah. you and me, as his victims. He knows your name and address. Yeah. He knows your strength and your weaknesses. And sometimes in the shadows, he and his forces, they lurk, waiting, planning for the moment they will strike. When you're caught off guard, he desperately hopes that you will, as many Christians, remain ignorant of his reality so that you will blame his assaults on someone or something else. Yeah. Satan, the devil, method of operation is almost always undercover. Yeah. It's ceaseless. He manipulates, hindering circumstances and inspires evil thoughts or temptations disguising his activities behind the shroud of people or things. And he will always seek to divert attention and blame for his actions on others. Yeah. But make no mistake, he is the real enemy. Yeah. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against darkness of this, of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, Ephesians 6, 12. But I've got good news for you tonight. Although Satan, the devil, is described like a growing lion, yeah. in reality, he yeah. has no actual authority yeah. over Christians, believers. He is not really a lion, but he roars like a lion mm -hmm. to bluff his victims into fear and intimidation. Yeah. Satan is a liar and deceiver yeah. and uses deception as his weapon to gain advantage over those who are ignorant of limitations of his power. Yes. That's John 3, 3, 8. Praise God that Satan is already a defeated enemy. And his legal authority was neutralized by the finished work of Jesus Christ, our Savior, on that old rugged cross. Yeah. So if Satan is defeated, then why then is he still able to cause trouble? Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you asked. Because even though Jesus Christ broke Satan's legal power, the Lord has left it up to us to enforce Satan's defeated condition. It is easy for Christians' responsibilities. It is every Christian responsibility 
to use the authority that Jesus has given us to put Satan in his place. Yeah. And as a Christian, as a believer, you need not fear Satan, but realize and exercise the authority that God has given you over Satan. Yeah. The devil, in every the devil, every Christian whose name has been recorded in the, in the Lamb's Book of Life, all of those who are saved has been given authority over the power of Satan, the devil. So behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's in Luke 10, 19. So you, you have the right to use the authority yeah. of the name of Jesus to, to repel and drive Satan out of your territory and to break his, his uh, grip over spiritual uh, strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. So when you recognize Satan's activity and, and, and convert operations, take authority over him in the name of Jesus. Jesus, just as Jesus and the early apostles did, they command Satan to leave. You'll find that in Mark 16, uh, 16 uh, 17. Satan, the devil, he hates the name of Jesus. And he detests an atmosphere of praise and worship which exalts the name of Jesus. Jesus said for where there were two or three are gathered together in my name, yeah. I am there in the midst of them. Matthew 18 20. So be assured the, the presence of Jesus Christ will expel meaning to force out the presence of Satan. Lifting up Jesus in praise will send Satan and the devil running. There is power in the name of Jesus. And so the name of Jesus, he will drive Satan away, but it would be pointless to order Satan's departure if we leave the door wide open for him to flourish. So the Bible tells us not to give place for the devil, Ephesians 4.27. That is, provide no area of your life where Satan can be comfortable or establish strongholds. And so the enemy can always be found working in those who entertain sin, yeah. disobedience, rebellion, or a self-willed nature. Unforgiveness towards others is another area in which Satan flourishes. Yeah. You'll find that in 2 Corinthians 2.11. Furthermore, any area of your life which is not submitted to God is considered open territory for Satan. And he knows his expanding influence of those areas. And that is why scripture reads, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you, James 4, 7. And so the only way to actually resist Satan is to submit, to submit yourself fully to God. And this is what Jesus was referring to when he said, the ruler of the world is coming, and he has nothing in me. John 14, 30, Jesus has submitted himself to God, and although, the, although uh, Satan, the devil, would try him, there was nothing for Satan to use to gain an advantage. So rejoice, my Christian sisters and brothers. Stop complaining That's good. and whining yeah. Yeah. that the devil made me do this and do that. Uh -huh. Because when you show Satan fear and confusion and lack of faith, he will turn your life into a playground. And when and, and when and he will whisper in your ear, you will never amount to anything. You will never get rid of those addictions. You will never be successful. You will never find that man or woman that you've been looking for. You will never be able to stand on your own. You will never, you will never, you will never, you will never stop setting yourself up. Yeah. Let the same, let the same echo that in your ear. You will never, never, never in your ear and to your spirit. The devil is a liar. He's yeah. a deceiver, and the yeah. truth Everybody is not in you. God is in you, uh -huh. and you have been given power over the devil, over Satan, by submitting to God. And exercising your uh, your authority in the name of Jesus, you are more powerful than the enemy. You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Yeah. So there is power in the name of Jesus. 
There is victory in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So what you have to do, you have to be on God yourself 24-7 because you see, Satan never takes a rest. He does not take a rest. And so doing our weaknesses, you know, and we have a tendency sometimes, you know, we'll tell people what we're going through. And sooner or later, you actually get tired of hearing that yourself. So change, change it up. It's what you're coming through. Yeah. It's what you're coming through because it's a whole difference than going through to coming through. If you're coming through, you can see God. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Oh, in the book of Malachi, it declares, Will a man rob God? Yet, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offering. Oh, in Malachi, it declares, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. My brothers and sisters, this time and now, for us to sow back into the storehouse that blesses us not just weekly, not just monthly, not just yearly, but the storehouse that blesses us daily. Come on, let us pray. Gracious God, bless the seed and the sower. Bless those who have a desire but don't have it. That God, whenever you permit them to have it, that God, they would release that which you bless them with. God, bless us now to give cheerfully. Bless us now to give liberally. Such is our prayer in the name that gave us everything that we have. It's in that name that we do pray. Amen. Listen, as you're preparing to give, I want you to go to give the fire. Greater Grace, Portsmouth, Virginia, those of you that use PayPal, I want you to go to PayPal and look up Greater Grace, Portsmouth, Virginia, so that, see, those of you that don't use electronic giving, but you want to be a blessing to the ministry that is seemingly feeding you and your family, you can sow that seed to P.O. Box 13514, Chesapeake, Virginia, 233 Two five, and the Greater Grace Church will gladly receive those seeds that you're sowing. We appreciate you for all that you sow, because we would not be able to continue to carry this great gospel if it were not for the generosity and the benevolence of wonderful people like you. With that being said, thank y'all so much for your cheerful and your liberal giving, but it's preaching time now, and I thank God that we got an educator par excellence. She loves the word of God. She is a historian. She loves reading about God's word. She loves studying God's word. And not only does she love reading and studying God's word, she loves sharing about God's word. So with that being said, it is none other than Dr. Hilda God Richardson that shall come. I've known Dr. Richardson practically all of my life. And ever since I've known her, I've seen God move in powerful ways in this woman of God's life. She's rich in wisdom. She's rich in history. And if you stay tuned, I promise that you will be blessed. So after the music ministry shall set the atmosphere and make that which is sharing God's word easy, they're going to come. They're going to sing our hearts and set the building on fire. And then Dr. Richardson is going to come and she's going to impart wisdom and truth to us that will help us be better Christians. Y'all be blessed. Dr. Richardson, we would see Jesus. Music ministry, take us that way. As you're sowing your seeds, as you're giving your offering, is it all right if we rock for just a few minutes, y'all? Can we take it back up a little fire right here, y'all? Yeah.
we're talking about sharing our faith. You know, uh, sometimes some of us are shy. Some of us are not public speakers. A large number of us don't even want to do that. But we need to learn to share our experience in becoming a Christian. Yeah, that's right. Don't be intimidated by other people's testimony. Yeah. You know, some people got a long testimony, and I often think about Paul, and I call it a Pauline salvation. Mm. He was knocked off of his beast on the road to Damascus to persecute Christians. Yeah. That was his job. But we all don't have that experience. Yeah. Some people have grown up all their life, go to church, did what their mama and daddy told them to do, went to school, just followed directions. And somehow or another, they feel like their conversion is not as important yeah. as Paul's. So they become intimidated by other people's great testimony. Yeah. I usually say the bigger the sin and the bigger the testimony. Uh -huh. So you have to understand sometimes when you have really, really lived, as the old folks used to say in the whole of this church, a horrible life of sin, yeah. you might have a wonderful salvation. Right. But there are some of us that have always lived a quiet and even secular life. But when we become saved and become Christians, our testimony is just as important as a Pauline salvation. Yeah. Because there's somebody out there uh -huh. that may need to know that though I have not had, I did not slay Christians. I haven't done everything the devil would have me to do. Yeah. I still need to be saved. And I still need to be able to say I'm a Christian. That's right. Um, don't get mixed up with the details. Don't get lost in the details about how and what you did when you were not saved. Right. Remember the three most important parts of every testimony is what you were, how you met Christ, and what you are now. Yeah. What you are today in Christ yeah. is the important piece. You know, we, and there are always people around that says, oh, I know them when. Uh -huh. Don't allow those people to interfere in your Christian walk. Jesus. Because that's Satan's ploy to keep you off your mark, uh -huh. to try to make you feel bad about saying you are a Christian. That's because right. one thing he does not want you to do is talk about the salvation yeah. of the Lord. Uh -huh. He does not want you to talk about the goodness of God. Jesus. He does not want you to talk about how you were saved. He doesn't want you to know that. Yeah. So if you don't say it, some person sitting out there may need to hear your testimony That's right. so that they can make that decision That's right. to That's seek right. Christ in their life. Yeah. So therefore, Satan will try to use whatever he can to stop you. And there are always those people saying, I remember when. Uh -huh. I remember when he did this. Uh -huh. I remember when he used drugs. I remember when she was out there. Uh -huh. Out there doing what? If you were out there doing it and you remember when they were, you were out there too. How would you know? How would you know what somebody out there was doing if you weren't out there with them? So let's make sure that when we make that step, we remember the three elements and the three parts of every testimony. What you were, how you met Christ, at what you are now. Yeah. Also, don't get caught up in the details. Nobody needs to know every detail of your life. That's good. Yeah. Nobody yeah. needs to know that. That's not even important. Yeah. And it shouldn't be important to anybody. We need to know what are you doing now. We need to know the, depth, the, the details of your salvation experience because that's what's going to help other people come to Christ. Yeah. How did it happen for you? Where were you that evening or that morning? You know, all the time you don't have to be in the building. 
Sometimes you can find Christ on your knees beside your bed. Uh -huh. yeah. Sometimes you'll find him in your kitchen looking out the kitchen window. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think about it. Most of the time, my conversation with God is not necessarily our Father uh -huh. who art in heaven. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's looking in my kitchen window, Lord, what am I going to do today? Yeah. Yeah. Father God, keep me in your care today. Yeah. Keep my children as they go off to their workplace, Lord, give them traveling verses. Uh -huh. Sometimes I'm talking to God in the kitchen, at the window, washing dishes. Yeah. So it's not a particular place or thing that you have to do in order to become a Christian. It's not important. Sometimes you can be in your car, driving along the street. Sometimes your car is your sanctuary. That's where you can sing your song. That's where you can pray out loud. And sometimes you can just have a conversation with Christ. And it's so important because there's nobody there but you and him. So let's make sure that we do our part and make sure that we have the details of our salvation, yeah. not of our sin life. And do not let the enemy persuade you that your story isn't important. That's right. You know, a lot of times, we get this downward spiral in our life where we don't think we're about nothing. Yeah. We don't think our salvation's about anything. Ah. We don't think our church is about anything. Ah. We don't think anything we're doing is worth it. But that's a ploy of Satan. Yeah. That's a ploy of Satan to keep you down. Ah. And when he can keep you down, he can keep you from lifting Christ up. We got to always lift him up in our lives. Right. And when he lift, we lift him up, he'll draw us up. You know what he said? When you lift him up, he'll draw all men up. You won't stay down and stop allowing people to put you down. You know, we, our children are going through such images. And I look at the images on the television, on YouTube, all of these images. We got little girls. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about young ladies. I'm talking about little girls running around trying to look like a model. No, that's not the image for our little girl. We're running around, we lose the image. We got our young men walking around trying to be quote unquote thugs because that's supposed to be cool. No. No, that is Satan using his wiles to steal our children. That's right. And if I can keep steal your children, then I can change a generation. That's right. Come on. We need to think what happened last month. First time in the United States of America, everyone is celebrating Juneteenth. Huh. I grew up in a household, my dad was a truck driver, so he knew a lot of stuff that he used to share with us. So I knew about June too. But a lot of my friends didn't. But we kept it under wraps. We don't celebrate ourselves as a group of people. Oh. We need to teach our children. Yeah. Not that you the N-word. Yeah. Don't you call your little children that. Yeah. You're already teaching them that they are not worthy. And we are all worthy. Christ died for all of us. Not just somebody yeah. that is high up, not somebody because of where they live. Uh -uh. Christ died for all of us. Yeah. And when we share our faith with one another, as it says in Acts, you have to share your faith. Because when you share your faith, that means that you are reaching out to tell somebody how great it is to be loved by Christ. You know, when you know in your heart that you are loved by him, that he gave his life. You know, God, think about it, mothers. How many women would give up their own job yeah. Yeah. to save somebody else? But God did that for you. He gave his only begotten son. He shed his blood. He let him go on Calvary yeah. and carry all of our sins. Uh -huh. And we are blessed because, you know, we weren't there when that happened. Yeah. 
but all because we do believe. And now we know that he did that just for me. As I tell my children, Jesus died just for me. I get real selfish. I own it. I live it. It is mine. He gave his life for me. And that's the part of salvation that we need to let everybody know. Salvation definitely is free. And he gave his life for us. So let us share our faith with others. Even if you're in the grocery store, you know, sometimes you're standing there, the line is so long, and you're looking at your watch, and you're looking at your phone, and you know you need to hurry up and get on. But stop and think. If I were not standing here, I could be laying on my sick bed, not even knowing who I am. But only through his grace and his mercy are we here today. And we are able to talk about our salvation. Salvation is such a wonderful thing to talk about. And sometimes when we do that, we don't have time to talk about other people's business. Sometimes we need to talk about Christ and stop talking about our neighbor. Uh -huh. yeah. A lot of times we have a lot of things going on in our communities, and we spend a lot of time talking about it, but let's spend more time praying about it, less time talking about it, and more time sharing our faith with others. Yeah. So on this Tuesday afternoon, I certainly hope something has been said that will increase your faith so that you will be willing to share with others. And you may look at sharing your faith in Acts, the 22nd chapter, and you'll be so happy to read that and study to show yourself approved, a work and not a shame, and rightly dividing his word of truth. I thank you. Amen. Thank you.